worship you, God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you.
Father, today we acknowledge you as our promise keeper and a way maker. We thank you, Lord, when we don't see a way, you remind us, well, you're the way maker. You are the truth and the light in a dark place. You are our hope when things look hopeless. You are our strength when we feel weak. You are our joy when sometimes we don't feel like being joyful. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our good shepherd and our good father. You keep your promises, you're faithful. And Lord, we gather in your name today. We thank you, Lord, for for your presence and for the truth that you are working. You are at work. Thank you for seeing each circumstance and each situation and each heartache. Thank you, Lord, that you're at work. Lord, give a hug, a, a whisper, a word of encouragement, and a touch by your spirit. We pray today in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. It's hard to transition from that. That's a powerful song. It's a powerful song, powerful truth. Well, we also have a, a special treat for you today. You know, we've been studying the, the book of John and uh, we got to the last part last week. We, we finished the series and we were reminded why John wrote the book because he wants people to believe in who Jesus really was. And uh, largely, the people that he was ministering with and to were Jewish people and Gentiles. But, you know, uh, Pete, Jim, John, the disciples, Jesus himself are all Jewish. And uh, John writes this book to help them come to believe that Jesus is truly the Messiah, the Son of God. And today, there are untold numbers of Jewish people still who have not come to believe John's document that he wrote about who Jesus is and our special guest today Reverend Robert Spector has dedicated his life to help more Jewish people come to faith in who Jesus really is so would you welcome with me to the platform my good brother Robert Spector Shalom it's a pleasure to be back. It's been a number of years since I was here, and uh, I uh, appreciate, Pastor, you allowing me to come, and especially at uh, short notice. I had a cancellation. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of cancellations this year. Can you believe that? And um, anyways, I, I so appreciate, Pastor, this opportunity, and uh, I'm glad to be here this morning. The uh, ministry of Rock of Israel was founded by my father. He grew up in an Orthodox home, and so it was a, uh, a miracle that he became a believer. He, was, he became a believer and was zealous for the Lord. He, of course, was ostracized from family. Back in those days, that, was, that happened often. Today, not so much, but still, um, most Jewish people who believe in Jesus are thought to be mashugana, crazy, and so, uh, anyways, he was zealous for the Lord, and so he went to Bible school and became a missionary, first in Haiti, and that's where I was born. I'm a Jewish Haitian. I bet you'd never met one before. And uh, then he went to Africa, and it was while he was in Africa that God spoke to his heart to come back and start a ministry to his own people, and he did that 50 years ago. And uh, after I graduated from college, uh, my father asked me to come and help him in the ministry. I did, and later, of course, became president of the ministry. But I'm also an Assemblies of God appointed missionary to uh, the U.S. Uh, a U.S. missionary. So I'm a missionary to the Jews in America. There are six million Jews in America. Uh, there are about seven million in Israel. So almost as many Jews are here as are in Israel. Of course, the, um, the Bible says prophetically that God is going to regather them from all over the earth, and he has, from the north, the, the south, the east, just not quite yet the west, but I, I'm sure that God is going to keep his word, and so someday maybe I'll be living in Israel, I don't know. But uh, I'm trying to reach the Jewish people here in America. 
I would guess that only 1% of those who, who consider themselves Jews believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And uh, so talk about an unreached people group. This is a needy fill. In fact, I want to encourage you, if you have any desire to be in a missionary, please consider being a missionary to the Jewish people. That there is a great need there. But anyway, so what is the Rock of Israel doing? Well, uh, first and foremost, is it is all about sharing the gospel, sharing the message that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. And so we're doing everything we can. We used to go to many different uh, cities with large Jewish populations, like, you know, of course, New York and, and even cities like Atlanta, Cleveland, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. We hand out thousands of tracts. Praise God for Light for the Lost Ministries that provide for their missionaries the materials, and we would hand out about 100,000 tracts every year. But over the years, it's, it's um, become difficult to get people's attention on the street. Everybody has one of these, and they're either listening to music or, or texting and, and not paying attention, and so it's hard to get their attention on the street. And uh, about 15 years ago, we began to go to uh, fairs, uh, state fairs with large, you know, attendances. And so um, every year now in January, uh, in fact, this year we went to the South Florida Fair. And then in February, we went to the state fair, which was is in Tampa. And then we set up at the Miami-Dade County Fair in March. We know when to go to Florida. And um, of course, and but you know, of course, this year has been different. As I said, it's uh, a lot of cancellations and all our outreaches. But I have a video. I'm going to talk while it's going on and kind of give you a visual of what we're doing in our outreaches. Um, you might think that we have a literature table, but no, that's not going to do it. Uh, not too many people would come to a literature table, especially Jewish people. And so what we do is we set up a booth of... Um, no? We set up a booth of uh, Judaica, and these Jewish products draw Jewish people to us. Since 2006, Rock of Israel Ministries has found a unique way to reach both Jewish and Gentile people with the gospel. In the marketplace, we've been renting booths at state and county fairs. However, one of the best fairs we have found is actually not in the U.S., but in Toronto, Canada. It is at the Canadian National Exposition, also called the CNE, and it has 1.5 million attendees each year. Toronto is a city much like New York, with a very diverse population. We meet more Jewish people here than any other fair. And with our many Jewish and biblical products out there on the table, including books, Art of the Covenant models, jewelry, and more, it brings many curious people over to us each day, much like fishing and bait. For instance, last year at this fair, we were able to share the Messiah with over 325 Jewish people who came to our booth. That number is not even including the hundreds more non-Jewish people we speak with as well. And even if they do not stop to talk, hundreds more will stop dead in their tracks and read our large banner, which says, Jesus made me kosher. Jewish people will stand there for a minute or more and read how Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Of course, many non-Jewish people stop to read it as well. We cannot tell you how productive this unique banner has been over the years. For those who do come over and talk with us, most will take a bookmark which is a copy of the banner, Jesus Made Me Kosher, and listen as we share how we are Jews who believe that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah promised to our people. Of course, there will be some who are open to the message. If they are open, we will give them a free book of Jewish testimonies or something similar. Conversely, there are always some who oppose us being there as well. Sometimes we get a visit from local rabbis who seek to stop what we are doing. They show up with video cameras and argue with us. Nevertheless, we are sure that the gospel will go forward no matter what the situation. And the booth in Toronto is just one of the many booths we have rented and continue to rent across North America each year armed with good volunteer staff who love God and love the Jewish people. With all that being said, may we ask for your help in reaching people? Renting the booth in Toronto costs $5,000. That is not even including travel and hotel expenses. 
As was once said, the gospel is free, but getting out there costs money. Would you consider sponsoring this year's upcoming booth? $250 will sponsor one full day booth rental. $25 will sponsor an hour rental. Will you consider standing with us in this unique marketplace ministry? Visit our website, Facebook page, or call us at 1-800-722-ROCK. These fairs uh, are the way that we get to encounter Jewish people. And one of the things that would be shown in the video would be a big banner that says, Jesus made me kosher. And that starts a lot of conversations. And, uh, and in fact, I have a bookmark of that uh, banner. If you'd like one, please pick it up at the table in the foyer. It, uh, it talks about Jesus being Jewish. Did you know that? And, um, and so uh, uh, we're at all these fairs, but of course this year all the fairs canceled after uh, March, or in March, uh, all the fairs, Ohio State Fair, the uh, Canada Fair, the Washington State Fair, the Arizona State Fair, uh, Maryland, all the fairs canceled. So we're hoping, praying, as you are, that this COVID thing will be over, you know, over soon so that we can go back to these outreaches. In the meantime, we're doing everything we can on the internet. Uh, we're doing ads on Facebook, we're doing ads on Google, reaching even into Israel, even though we're U.S. missionaries, we're now reaching into Israel uh, with the message of the gospel but uh, putting a lot of effort in, in the internet uh, evangelism. The uh, second area of ministry for Rock of Israel is our, uh, what I'm doing this morning, uh, speaking, sharing with Christians, helping Christians understand that there's a need to reach the Jewish people. Not only a need, but also helping Christians understand the Bible is a Jewish book. Did you know that? Written by Jews? All of it. And so we're helping Christians understand the Bible in the culture and context it was written. And um, we're also hopefully helping Christians uh, understand their obligation to Israel. The Bible tells you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Are you doing that? That's what the Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so we're encouraging Christians to uh, have a heart, a, a compassion for the Jewish people, just like Jesus does. And then um, we uh, also, our third area of ministry is the resources that we bring. We have a table full of materials, a lot of the things that we have at the state fairs and so forth. And so you don't have to go to the state fair, you can have it right here. And um, we uh, uh, have a lot of books and other material on there, some jewelry, some prayer shawls, some anointing oil. And uh, so our, our third area of ministry is resourcing. And I want to mention five books real quick. The first book is a large book. It, rather, it, it, it covers a lot of material. It's, I call it an encyclopedia of Jewish customs and traditions and how they point to Jesus. It's called Jewish Faith and the New Covenant. And it uh, deals with the feast. It deals with the prayer shawl. It deals with the... Oh, just so much information in this book. And, and by the way, it's written by Ruth Spector LaSalle. That's my aunt, so it must be good. Another book that I would recommend is uh, a book that's a testimony book. It's called Betrayed. It's a wonderful story of a Jewish man who comes, or rather her, his daughter comes home from college, tells him that she's become a believer in Jesus and he feels betrayed. And so he sets out to prove to her that Jesus couldn't be the Messiah but in the process of his uh, explanation, he finds out that Jesus is the Messiah. So it's a wonderful true story. And then a book that uh, is really not a religious book. It's more a, a, uh, uh, a, maybe you would call it a political book. It's Myths and Facts, A Guide to the Arab-Israeli Conflict. And uh, there's a lot being said about uh, the um, peace agreements in, in Israel, but there are churches, can you believe this? There are church denominations that are boycotting Israel. They are against Israel, and yet God is for Israel. In fact, God made promises to Israel, and if you don't think he's going to keep his promises, you don't stand on much solid ground there, because if he doesn't keep his promises to Israel, he won't keep his promises to you. He's got to keep his promises. Paul says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. 
And so this is uh, Myths and Facts. It will help you perhaps share with those uh, people you might know that are anti-Israel. A book that uh, also helps you understand some of the, it's called Understanding the Difficult Words of Jesus. It, it gives a, a little bit a, a Hebraic perspective, a, a Jewish perspective to what Jesus is saying. In fact, Jesus used idioms. You know what an idiom is? It's a figure of speech. So that if I said, it's raining cats and dogs, you know I'm not talking about animals, right? That's an idiom. Well, Jesus used Jewish idioms. And um, a lot of people don't know what he's talking about because they don't know what the idiom is. Anyway, the last book I want to mention is a book I wish every Christian would read. It'll make you cry as you read it. It's the tragic story of the church and the Jewish people. It's called Our Hands Are Stained With Blood. The author is Michael Brown. He's written many books. Uh, uh, just for a reference, he was one of the pastors at the Brownsville Revival, if you remember that long ago. Um, he is uh, uh, a great uh, apologist for, uh, um, uh, he's a Jewish believer, and uh, this book will make you cry because you would be ashamed of some of the church fathers and what they said about the Jewish people. And so this is a book, and it's not, you know, hundreds of years ago, it's even today, and uh, the anti-Semitism that is even in the church. So, all right, enough commercial. I would say, though, that there are three reasons I, I would hope that you would come to the table. Number one, the, uh, the materials are things you might not find in your bookstore. In fact, most of the bookstores are closing, so now is a good opportunity. But the second reason is, as was said in the video, uh, the sale of these items also help to support our outreaches. And those fares are expensive. Not only the cost of the booth, but the travel, lodging, meals, and all the other expenses of an outreach like that. And they're long. You might think a, a fair is only a week long, but some of the state fairs are a month long. And so this is a very expensive way of doing ministry, but I've not found a better way to engage Jewish people in conversation. So uh, your purchase, the profit from the sale of these items, whether it's jewelry or prayer shawls or books, help us to have our booth at the fair. So you'll be getting something and supporting ministry at the same time. So I hope you take time. The, uh, uh, and by the way, I came prepared if you did not, because on my phone I have an app to take your credit cards. So I'm ready if you are. And the third reason is every item you buy is one less I'm going to have to pack up afterwards. So at this time I want to uh, bring my daughter up. She, she was going to do a, a, a special, but I, I asked her to uh, say the Shema. Shema is one of the most prayed prayers of the Jewish people. This is Sarah. She went to Evangel University and got a degree in music and math and uh, even sang the hymn at the baccalaureate. Uh, I don't know if you, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Leolam Vaed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Do you take this? Thank you. Yes. It's not often that she travels with me, and I was glad to have her. She uh, lives here in Pennsylvania, about an hour south, so I asked her to come with me this morning. The uh, uh, message I want to give, uh, bring, is, of course, in line with our, our focus, our ministry as as I am a, an Assemblies of God missionary to the Jewish people, uh, even though that's my heart, I believe it should be your heart too. And I want to give you five reasons why you should be involved in Jewish evangelism. And more than that, there is a call for you to be involved in evangelism anyways. Jesus said... You shall be my witnesses. If you have the Holy Spirit, this is something that is expected of you. 
And so I want to share reasons why uh, you should be involved in Jewish evangelism, but overriding is the fact that you need to be involved in evangelism regardless. So here are the five reasons, and I'll try to be brief about this. Number one, the Jewish people are neglected and misunderstood. Now, how can I say that when there's, you know, churches everywhere, there's Christian radio, Christian TV, um, how can I say they're neglected? Well, they're neglected for, because of bad doctrines, bad theologies, and dare I say it, even in the Assemblies of God. Uh, I am very um, thankful for the Assemblies of God, and especially their 14th tenet of faith that says that we believe in the second coming of, of the Lord and, and the restoration of Israel, and yet, there are some in the Assemblies of God, that, even in the Assemblies of God, who think that God is finished with Israel and that the church has replaced Israel. This is false. As I said, Paul says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. God is not finished with Israel. Paul says, has God forsaken Israel? You know, this is the Apostle Paul, the missionary to the Gentiles. He says, has God forsaken Israel? He says, no way, no way. And he uses himself as an example. He's of the tribe of Benjamin. He's an Israelite. So God hasn't forsaken Israel. So the theologies, the uh, uh, doctrines that have crept into the church, the amillennial, the, the idea that, that we are living in the kingdom now, and yet Jesus said to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? On earth. You look around you today at the kingdoms and you would say they're not controlled by God, I'm sure, um, even America. And so we, we know that that day is coming uh, when Jesus will rule from Jerusalem over all the earth. That's a promise. That's going to happen. And yet that's not yet today. And we need to be praying for it. So there are doctrines that have kept the gospel from the Jewish people. But it, because if people understood how important it was that Jewish people know their Messiah, they would be doing more about it. And yet, as I said, only 1% of the Jewish people believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And so there is a, a, a neglect a misunderstanding. They, there are people who believe that the Jews don't need Jesus, that they have a different way of salvation, they have a different covenant, that they have, uh, you know, uh, the first covenant, and that Christians have the second covenant, and yet the Bible is clear. The new covenant is promised to Israel. Read about it in Jeremiah 31. And so there is a, a problem of doctrine. There are people who think that Jews can't be saved, that they, they kill Jesus, therefore they're under God's judgment. False. Jesus said, no one takes my life. No one. If you, do you believe Jesus is God? Do you believe it's possible to kill God? No. Jesus said, I lay down my life. And so the idea that the Jews are Christ killers has been a falsehood for 2,000 years, and yet that's one of the reasons they've been persecuted. And so there are false doctrines that have kept the gospel from the Jewish people. Another one is that they're saved already. They don't need the God. Uh, they're chosen people. They don't need Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. He is the only way. No one comes to God but by him. And so they need Jesus. Guess who he was talking to when he said it? Jews. And so these are reasons they have been forgotten or misunderstood or neglected. Also, stereotypes have kept the gospel from the Jewish people. There are people who think that Jews are too hard-headed, hard-hearted, and rich to be saved. This is all false. Or they may be hard-headed, but you know God, he can do the impossible. Think about Paul. And so the idea that they all look alike or they 
all think alike or that they all these different stereotypes are false they they give a wrong impression and they they make christians afraid to share their faith with their jewish friends by the way how many of you have a jewish friend or know someone jewish a few of you the rest of you i want to introduce you to jesus he could be your friend he's jewish Secondly, they have a distorted view of Jesus. Their view of Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. Their view of Jesus is the one that they've been persecuted in. The reason they've been persecuted, that they killed the Christian God. So false, and yet that's why they were persecuted. And, and has anyone seen the play or movie Fiddler on the Roof where they were kicked out of city after city after city in Russia? Or the Crusades who, who killed Jews and Muslims? Or the Inquisition where Jews were forced to convert or die? Or, or the pogroms of Russia? Uh, or the Holocaust? Can you believe it? in a Christian country, a Lutheran country, the Holocaust? I mean, the Jews fared better in Muslim countries. So strange, because Jesus is Jewish, the gospel is Jewish, and yet they were persecuted in this country of Christians. And so they have a distorted view of Jesus. This comes about not only from persecution, but also tradition. Their parents didn't believe in Jesus, so why should they? Or their rabbis are saying that Jesus is not the Messiah. He, he's an imposter. He's, he, or he was one of many who claimed to be the Messiah. And so there, there is tradition that keeps this distortion alive amongst the Jewish people. They think of Jesus as the God of the Gentiles. Because he's lo he looks like he's a Gentile. He acts like he's a Gentile. He doesn't look or act Jewish in their eyes. So that's the third reason, is that, that even the presentation of the gospel doesn't sound Jewish. This is the gospel in a nutshell. Um, God sent his son, he died, he rose from the dead. If you believe that, you're going to heaven. Somewhat the gospel, but there's a lot lacking in that message. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. On his cross, king of the Jews, the root of Jesse, the king of Israel, son of David, Messiah. And yet, all the Jewish people here is son of God, one of three gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You heard the Shema sung? There's only one God. I hope you believe that. There's only one God, not three. One God. And so there is a distorted view of Jesus. Another reason you need to share with Jewish people is destiny. God created the Jews. Did you know that God created the Jews? Before Abraham, there weren't any Jews. Noah wasn't Jewish. So God took a man, we wouldn't have picked him because, you know, according to tra tradition, his father's making idols. Doesn't sound like a good beginning, but God knew what he was doing. In fact, we hold up Abraham as the epitome of faith, the faith of Abraham, you know, give, willing to give up his own son. And so God chose Abraham, God chose Isaac. It wasn't Ishmael. In fact, God says, take Isaac, your only son. We know that Abraham had another son, and yet God says, Isaac, your only son. So God chooses, and God knows what he's doing. He chooses again. He chooses Jacob. In fact, he says, before you were even born, take that, abortionist. Before you were born, I chose you. He chose Jacob. And he changes Jacob's name to Israel. And so, yes, they are the chosen people, but they need Jesus. You could be chosen, you could be a son, and yet far from God. You could be in rebellion and still loved. 
And so there is a destiny. God created the Jews, and he created them for a purpose. You know what the purpose was? Uh, Take a verse in the New Testament, change a few words, and say, For God so loved the world, he created the Jews. It's true. He, He did. He created the Jews. And what was their purpose? What is their destiny? To be a light to the nations. A light to the Gentiles. That's what the scripture says. And so, how can the Jews fulfill their destiny if they don't know the light of the world? How can they be a light if they don't know the light? And so, you need to reach Jewish people with the message of the gospel. They were created for this purpose. And by the way, you are grafted into Israel. You haven't replaced Israel. You, you know, it's not the church versus Israel. You have been grafted into Israel. Read about it in Ephesians. You who are far off have been brought nigh by the blood of Jesus and made partakers of the commonwealth of Israel. You are part of Israel. You don't take its place, but you are part of. So what's your purpose? What's your destiny? As I said earlier, Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses. So you're to be a light to the Gentiles. You're to be a light to the nations, as is Israel's purpose. Number four, there is a debt. Now, I recognize that most people don't like to find out they owe something. I don't like that, but I'm here to tell you that you owe the Jewish people. Let's go to scriptures on this one. On, in Romans 15, Paul says that there's a debt owed to the Jewish people. He says in Romans 15, verse 25, But now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Who are the saints in Jerusalem? Yes. Anyone? Jews and saints, believers, Right? Jewish believers in Jerusalem. So he's going to take, he's going to minister to the Jewish believers in Jerusalem. He he says in verse 26, For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. See, I told you, poor Jews. So he's taking this contribution from these uh, believers in, these Gentile believers in uh, Macedonia and Achaia, he's going to take this contribution, and he says in verse 27, it pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. He says the Gentiles are indebted to the Jews. He says, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, remember it was Jewish missionaries that went out from Jerusalem. If they are partakers of their spiritual things, their duty, the Gentiles' duty, is also to minister to them in material things. Now, if Paul can say there's a material debt, that there's a monetary debt, I think I stand on solid ground to say that there's a spiritual debt. That because the gospel went out from Jerusalem to all the world, that there's a debt to take that gospel back to the Jewish people, especially since only about 1% are believers. And so there is a debt. And if you don't like this debt idea, read about it in Genesis 12, 3, where God promises a blessing to those who bless Israel. Now, there are some in the church that are supporting uh, a organization that is blessing Israel, I assume. Uh, it's a humanitarian aid organization called the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. It is a humanitarian aid organization, and so I applaud any support for Israel. However, that is not a Christian organization. If you're going to support the believers in Israel, if you're going to support evangelism in Israel, that's not the organization you should be supporting. Because they're orthodox. They don't want Jews to believe in Jesus. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. There are even in the Assemblies of God ministries that are doing compassion ministries in Israel. You know, Jacob's Hope and others. And so um, 
I got off topic here. Anyways, uh, it's just that I get so uh, concerned when I see so many Assembly of God churches supporting the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews and not supporting, uh, out, uh, you know, uh, evangelistic outreaches. All right. So number four, uh, five. Yeah, so number four was you have a debt to the Jewish people. You have a debt to the Jewish people. Uh, also, you, you can reap a blessing, because God promised. Uh, and by the way, he said that to Abraham, I'll bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. But he repeated it to, to Isaac and to Jacob, and so it is to Israel that he has made this promise that those who bless Israel will be blessed. If you want a blessing, God has promised a blessing. Number five, they are key to world revival. Now, <clears throat> we often uh, pray for revival, both, uh, you know, individually and community. We want revival in America. And yet here is a sure way to bring revival. In Romans 11, verse 11, it says, again, uh, Paul is speaking, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? You get the picture? That if the Jewish people rejection of Jesus brought salvation to the world, how much more will come when Israel believes in their Messiah? That's what Paul says. He continues, for I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I, as I am a, an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, if by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? You can't be more revived than that than resurrection, right? That is true revival. When you're dead and you become alive, that's revival. And so we see that with their acceptance comes life from the dead. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, verse 39, he says, I say to you, you shall see me no more until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is a messianic saying. That is a prophetic word. He who comes in the name of the Lord is the Messiah. So when Israel says that Jesus, or Yeshua, his Hebrew name, is the Messiah, he says they will see him. And so we understand that at the second coming of Jesus, he's going to deliver Israel, just as God promised. And so, if you want Jesus to return, one of the ways to make that happen is that Israel see their Messiah, and you can be helping them to do that. So I want to give you some practical steps. Obviously, I'm calling you, each and every one of you to be an evangelist. Everyone, everyone needs to be an evangelist. Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses. If you're a disciple of Yeshua, disciple of Jesus, this is your calling, to be his disciple, to be his witnesses, to, to proclaim his uh, kingship, that he is Lord, that he is Lord over all the earth and coming again. But also pray for Rock of Israel Ministries as we endeavor to proclaim this message. Pray for my family as we're uh, working to do all that we can as, as Assemblies of God missionaries, uh, U.S. missionaries. But also, have you seen the signs on the road that says this road was adopted by the I don't know, Boy Scouts of America. You've seen signs like that? Yeah, you can adopt a road. Well, if you can adopt a road, you could adopt a Jew. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to adopt a Jew. Now, you don't have to do this in the courts. Just find one Jewish person. 
So many of you don't know any Jewish people. So find a Jewish person. Look in the you know, directories uh, online or you know, the old telephone books. And find, you know, you'll see Jew- Jewish surnames. And, and I'm sure you've heard of a uh, number of uh, surnames and or people. There's a lot of Jews in politics, a lot of Jews in the media, in, in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, in Hollywood. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of, um, you know, Spielberg and Seinfeld and uh, Dreyfus and, you know, Leonard Nimoy was Jewish, William Shatner, Sarah Jessica Parker. A lot of the, the actors and actresses and producers are Jewish. So pick a Jew and adopt them in prayer. You, I'm sure, have relatives that you're praying for their salvation. Well, whether you knew it or not, these are your relatives for you've been grafted into Israel. And so you adopt one, and we know, I'm sure you understand that God answers prayer. Do you believe that? Even when we don't see the answer, we know he will answer, right? And so adopt a Jew in prayer, and uh, pray as if they're your relative, for they are, you're grafted into Israel. And so adopt a Jew, all I have to do is get six million Christians in America to adopt a Jew, and we'll see Israel saved. The, um, the fact is, is that we all should be sharing this good news. Um, especially in this time of, of loneliness and separation. And, and uh, it's a time to be praying. It's a time to be sharing in whatever manner you, manner you can, uh, especially in this social distance world we live in today. The, uh, the Jewish people do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, or at least most Jewish people do not believe. They do not believe in the New Testament. They do not believe that the Messiah has come. How many of you have heard that there are many Arabs having dreams about Jesus? Have you heard that? I heard that. I haven't met anyone, but I heard that there are many Arabs having, or Muslims having dreams about Jesus. Well, pray that Jewish people will have dreams about Jesus and that they will know their Messiah so that they can be what God created them to be, to be a light to the world. We, my father went as a missionary to Haiti and to Africa. There are other Jewish people in, in ministry in many parts of the world. If we can get Jewish people to know Yeshua, they will be proclaimers of that message. And there are, they are, you know, um, hard-headed and hard You know, they will get that message out there. So let's share the gospel with the Jewish people. If you have any questions, feel free to stop and talk to me. I'll answer one of your questions before you ask it. The one of the most often asked questions I get is, how do I keep this on my head? (laughs) My wife tells people I use push pins, but that's not true. It's It's a symbol of God's authority over man. So that's why religious Jews wear it. Um, They often wear, you know, bobby pins or hair clips. um, But God is our authority, and he has called you to be his witnesses. And he has called you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Help me reach my people. Shalom. Pastor. It's interesting, uh, just this week I watched a fascinating interview by Ben Shapiro, who's Jewish, uh, with John MacArthur. And he specifically asked John MacArthur the distinct difference between Jews, the Jewish faith, and and Christians. And he got to share that. And he let him talk for, it was powerful. And there's a a big difference there. And and I appreciate your comment, and I just see how 
It's interesting that, you know, we just finished our study on the book of John, where John's trying to convince Jews and, and others yeah. Yeah. about who Jesus really is. And, uh, and we got reminded today of the purpose of the church. Yeah. This, is why we're, this is why we're here. We're, we don't come to uh, hear good music and hopefully get a word that's going to get me through this week. <laughs> we're here to be a movement to help more people know Jesus. Amen. And that was, that's a, that was a powerful, powerful reminder um, in, our, in our goal to uh, pray and be, be, in, be in service. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for sharing. Beyond uh, the politics, big day coming up soon, mm -hmm. and everything going on with COVID, it, it's a good reminder to stay focused on what's important. All those things are important, but let's not lose sight of our mission. Mm -hmm. We can get so caught up in all these other things, we forget there are people that don't understand Jesus yet. So let's get on board that movement and let's be praying like he encouraged. Uh, we just talked uh, uh, this week, our brother Bill who heads up our prayer team. It's time to schedule another prayer emphasis. And let's find ways to serve. You know, we have uh, the light the night coming up and the kids fall party. That's what this is about. Another opportunity to influence another person for who Jesus really is. And so once again, just thank you. I see how God designed for this day. You got canceled <laughs> to make sure you're here to remind us to stay focused on why we're here. We're here to reach people far from God and teach them how to follow Jesus step by step. So on your way out today, I want to encourage you, you have your connect card, that little thing, drop it in the bucket on your way out. And, and, uh, and also, uh, that's a place for your offering too. You can do that or at the guest information for your offerings. We haven't been passing the plates. Um, but we want to encourage you uh, to give a little extra today to help our missionaries. Right now we have 26 missionaries our local church supports that tries to get out the message of Jesus all around the world. And uh, right now, I don't believe you're on our list of 26, so that's something we need to really think about. But let's bless our brother today and their ministry. And, and I just wanted to say Sarah. I got the chance to meet her just briefly before the service, and, and I, I just got the impression that she, she's got a nice touch of God on her life. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to pray over them and, uh, and be generous today. Drop off a little extra uh, for our missionary, if you would. If you are not a regular supporter of our missions, do that. You know, our offering envelopes have a slot. This is my tithe and offerings. This is for missions. Make a decision, you know, five, ten dollars a month, whatever you feel led to do, but just like he says, we really got to do all we can, especially for the nation of Israel, the Jewish people. Uh, it's a powerful reminder. So you can do, you can get practical by by doing that, uh, just adding to your, your your giving that way. But would you stand with me as we close in prayer? Father, we thank you for bringing us into your house again, and for the, this reminder. All around the world, there are so many that have not come to believe in Jesus and who he is. And we thank you today for the day that you opened our eyes and our ears. We were blind and we were deaf for a season. But you performed a miracle. We ask, Lord, for miracles for more people, some of our own family members, our friends, our co-workers, that you would do miracles in opening blind eyes and deaf ears to who you really are through Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask a special blessing on our good brother, missionary friend today, Robert and his daughter, Sarah and their family. You said the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. Continue, Lord, to order their steps in the midst of this pandemic. Show yourself faithful and provide for their needs. And Lord, let them see miracle after miracle as people come to express faith in your Son. 
And Lord, for our church, make us stronger. May each person that attends here find a way to be involved and to serve, to be part of this movement to help more people come to know you. Lead us, Lord, in that way, I pray. We pray, Lord, specifically today for our, our Jewish brothers and sisters. Do a miracle, Lord. Maybe like our brother said, give them dreams. Give them dreams. Just reveal yourself, Lord, in ways that we can't. Lord, we'll do our part, but Lord, reveal yourself. And in supernatural ways, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, love you all. Appreciate you seeing you all today. Be safe. We'll see you next week.